So um, the next couple of videos really are going to explain the process of assessing a client. So this will primarily be done through a consultation process. Um, so we'll look at what a consultation is and the different kinds of information that you will gather from and about your client so that you can be informed and you can use sort of every bit of information and your knowledge to design a treatment plan that's really going to help your client um, on their visit to you when you do your massage. So you can see here the specification. Um, it requires you to do some subjective assessments, which we'll look at in this video. Also some objective assessments, do some, observe, gather some information by observation um, and make sure that you understand the whole process of cons uh, the consultation with your client and how to um, gather findings about them in a safe and appropriate way so you can be informed, you know, always being professional and legal. So in terms of what a consultation is and what it aims to achieve, what its function is, um, we want to also, we, you know, we're going to look at that, but also we want to think about how a client might feel coming into the consultation with you and therefore how you should be as a sports massage practitioner or therapist. So SMP or SMT is sometimes used, practitioner or therapist. Um, and that is obviously what you will need to demonstrate in your practical demonstration during the consultation. So um, consultation is basically when you will meet your client for the first time. It's generally in, ideally done live rather than um, online. And what you need to do within that time that you have with them is gather subjective and objective information. So let's look at subjective information. This is the content, this is the information that um, they are likely to share with you. So information the clients will give to you. This is how they feel, this is where it's hurting, this is how I think I did it. Okay, so it is their opinion on what is going on with them and they're gonna share that with you. And you need to be a detective and ask them the right questions and follow up questions to tease out information. They, not, they might not know what to say to you or what information you need. And so, you know, look beyond the first thing they say and see if you can ask questions to follow up and probe a little bit further within reason. You'll also be doing and gathering some objective information and assessing some objective factual um, information by maybe doing some range of movement tests or some observation tests. Um, and you know this is an important part of the consultation too. What you as a professional might notice or see based on what they tell you might be quite different. So the process of the consultation is you are going to, first of all, well, I'm gonna explain what you need to gather in terms of the consultation um, content. And then you need to make a document that enables you to ask the right questions, gather the right information, and gather the right factual test objective information too. So it's probably better to understand what you've got to include first and then make the consultation document. And I will show some examples of those uh, probably in a separate video. Once you've gathered the information, of course, you'll interpret it and use that information to make a judgment on how what to include in your treatment plan. So the second part of 11.2 is Right, I've spoken to my client, I've met my client, I've done some testing. Now I need to design a treatment plan to address the issues they're presenting or to achieve what I need to achieve in the massage session. So uh, that's the process really. This is what we include. Make your document, use it at the end to decide what to include in your treatment plan. So I think some quite easy and obvious subjective assessment information to gather from your client is their sort of personal data, their personal information. Now legally, of course, data protection requires you to um, keep this um, securely. So uh, if it's digital, a password protected folder or file computer, you know, that's password protected, only you have access to. If it's paper documents in a locked cupboard, filing cabinet, something which again, 
you can say is secure. You're not allowed to share their information. Um, but it could be at the start of the session, you either get them to quickly fill it out and give um, their, put in a form the personal information. So the document that you create, you could say, oh, would you mind just you know quickly filling that in for me? Um, or it could be something that's done prior to the session. So in your video consultation, you can kind of pretend that thanks so much for your for completing your form and bringing your form, you know, as if you've already got it. But you need to obviously account for and justify why you're collecting this information from your client. And it makes sense: name, date of birth, age can obviously impact injuries, recovery, um, cause causes of of problems. Medical history and medical conditions is essential. We'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. You need to screen for, as in check, to see if there are any contraindications, reason why you shouldn't treat this, these people. And you need to know if they're on any medication because certain medications you know, can influence treatments um, and you need to ultimately make sure you're not going to cause them any harm. It be good and useful to know what sort of activity they do, what's their lifestyle like, how often do they exercise, what sort of exercise is it. Um, again, you're being detective, you're trying to put this, this information together to figure out what's going wrong. Um, similarly, as I've explained before, their occupation, what they do as a job, um, you know, is it active, is it passive, is it sedentary? It's really valuable to hear what your client wants to achieve by coming to you for a massage. So um, what will be important is that their expectations are realistic. You know, in, some, in many cases, one treatment is not going to solve everything. Um, and if they've got bad habits or they're inactive or they've got bad posture and they sit badly, you treating them once or a few times even isn't going to resolve that. So it could be that you need to coach them or advise them in some adjustments to make to their broader lifestyle. So listen to them, ask them what do they want to achieve. Uh, there may be multiple things you have to work on and you kind of have to work with them to prioritize the aims um, and balance their expectations of the treatment. But remember, all of this content is what you need to gather and you need to be able to justify why you're gathering it. You may have heard or used this sort of phrase uh, before, signs and symptoms. Um, I've made the symptoms larger because this is the subjective stuff that you're going to be gathering initially. The signs are the more objective um, things that you will observe and you will test and you will measure. So they're a bit more factual. They are quantifiable. Um, you might do a range of movement tests and that you know is numerical, whereas the symptoms tend to be where you ask the client, what symptoms have you experienced? Well, I've had headaches. Well, I feel really stiff on, on you know, my hip joint. It's the subjective information they'll share with you. So signs and symptoms, what we're looking at right now is the subjective symptoms that you're going to ask your client about. And then probably in the next video, we'll look at the signs, the objective measures and evidence you're going to gather, which are a bit more factual. A huge thing legally um, is that you don't cause any harm to your clients and you need to be really informed. And what you need to determine is, are the things uh, my client needs help with indications? Are they the sort of thing that are safe for me to treat them for? Are not going to cause any further damage or worsen anything? So obviously, if they've got sore muscles or they've got stiff muscles or short muscles or they've got knots, they are, or sometimes if they've got a buildup of tissue fluid, um, then these are very natural things that massage therapists can help clients with. Those are indications. You, they're green, go ahead and treat them. However, most importantly, you need to know from your consultation, but also in the session, are there any contraindications? And these are things that, or reasons why, you should not treat your client or should treat your client with caution or should modify how you treat your client. Maybe avoid certain areas of their body um, because treating them in a certain way or with certain techniques would cause them more harm. And it's essential that, that massage therapists know what the contraindications 
indications are that mean they shouldn't treat them legally. So we're going to look at those. So these um, terms uh, are linked to contraindications, and they, they might appear a little bit confusing, but I'll try and break it down. So the types of contraindications you might have are systemic or local. Systemic means it's like whole whole body, whereas local might be just local to one area of the body. So that describes what those two terms mean, whole body, systemic, or local to an area of the body. But we also need to know that some contraindications might be what we would call absolute. So if there was an absolute contraindication, what that means is do not treat them. If there's a relative contraindication, it means you might be okay to do some treatment, you might be okay to use certain techniques, you might be okay if you avoid certain areas but don't treat the other areas. So you might be get, able to work around it but be cautious. So absolute contraindications are red flags, don't, don't treat. Yellow flags are relative contraindications where you probably can, be sure you, it's okay, be sure you work around whatever the issue is. And this bottom half of the slide really shows how we can combine all of those. So whole body systemic contraindications might be absolute. So because something's going, you know, there's some issue with this person on a large scale, don't treat them at all. Or there's a, a whole body issue, but if you are cautious or if you do certain techniques, you might be okay. Similarly, if there's a local absolute contraindication, that means do not treat them. Do not treat that area. Or you might have a local relative contraindication, which means you can treat that area, but you might need to modify the, the techniques you use or be extra cautious. So it feels a little bit confusing, but it's not too bad. Contraindications are reason why, A, you don't treat them, or B, you refer. We'll look at referrals in a minute. You get somebody else's advice before you go ahead, somebody who's medically knowledgeable. We're not, you know, as massage therapists, you're not medical practitioners in any shape or form. And of course, um, you have to make a sensible judgment with that. And I would always err on the side of being cautious. So let's look at conditions, particularly skin conditions, that would be typically okay to treat, but you might need to work around a bit. So the skin is an organ. It's designed to keep things out generally. Um, it's protective, uh, but it's an active, ongoing sort of um, cycle of skin loss and re, you know, growing new skin, if you like. Um, so issues on the skin like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, so this is rosacea, this looks like psoriasis, sunburn, of course, dry skin over here. It could be prudent for you to go ahead, but don't treat those areas, avoid those areas, especially if they're flared. Dry skin probably isn't a real problem. In fact, the um, medium that you use, the cream that you use may well be beneficial, um, but it's just things to be aware of when you're treating. So it's not necessarily a reason to not to treat your clients, but especially in, if it's really sort of eczema or psori you know, psoriasis and flared up, you want, clearly want to avoid that area. What you don't want to do, especially if there's any open skin, um, is cause any more risk of, um, I was going to say contamination, but you know what I mean. Make sure your hands are clean and sanitized before treating them. You don't want any bacteria from you going into their sores. So let's look at some yellow flag or relative contraindications. These are the sorts of things that um, you should really avoid treating um, or completely modify. So if there are sort of more extreme flare-ups or some inflammatory diseases, pregnancy. Um, pregnancy doesn't mean you shouldn't treat somebody. There are specific massages that can be beneficial for pregnant women and helpful and soothing. Um, but you need to be cautious and understand that and have a, a, a different level of, of training and understanding for that. Acute muscle injuries, you know, if there's a severe torn muscle, you're not going to treat it directly. Obviously, fractures, open wounds, you know, as we've sort of alluded to, any, any severe burns or bruising would be stuff that you would perhaps not completely not treat them, 
but you need to work around or work with. And the way you might modify treatments would be to perhaps just avoid that area of the body, adapt your treatments. You wouldn't maybe do some um, frictions or compressions, which are more intense massage techniques. If there was a quite a severe bruise, you might just do lighter effleurage, something that's much more gentle, no deep work. You can obviously vary the pressure which you do the techniques, and that's an easy modification to, to work around with. You might have to, particularly with, let's say, pregnancy, modify how the client is lying or what position they're in, add extra um, pillows or supports between their knees, anything to protect them and make them more comfortable. So again, avoid certain treatments or modify what you do in terms of pressure. So as I said, friction, frictions and deep tissue techniques can be quite intense. And if there is reason not to do that, then you should avoid it. Some people might, might have allergies or might be allergic to certain products, uh, in which case you would just use different products or check with them. Always check with them. Always ask them if they're, if they're sort of medical conditions, you must check with a medical practitioner or get them to check with their doctor and get the doctor to liaise with you. So referring for further confirmation of whether you should go ahead is a brilliant thing to do if ever you're not sure. Never take any risks. So here's some, uh, again, skin conditions which if you saw, you should be quite mindful of and maybe avoid. Um, some of these I, I'd not heard of. Uh, look them up if you want to use them. But boils are not very pleasant. They're sort of um, massive blisters. Severe acne, uh, athlete's foot, which is very contagious. This one over here. Unexplained lumps and bumps and rashes. You know, apart from anything, if they don't know what it is and you don't know what it is, you refer them. You you certainly don't treat that area. Varicose, varicose veins can be very painful. Um, severe bruising, sunburn inflammation, open cuts, of course. So again, these conditions might mean that you just don't treat those areas, you avoid them, but you can treat other areas. If clients have only very recently had a nasty injury, um, massage might not be best done immediately, so there might need to be some delay until at least some of the um, healing process has happened. So it might be you know, several days or more, that you don't get this treatment because basically you're, you know, could be applying pressure where they've got damaged vessels beneath um, and inflammation, which again is really sore. So you have to really understand the healing process and know when to avoid treating clients in this situation. Of course, treat them in other areas if that's part of what's required as well. But if there's a specific area where there's an acute injury, then that might not be wise to treat them. We've mentioned pregnancy already. Um, pregnant women can feel really uncomfortable. There's a lot of strain on their body um, in an unnatural, I mean, I know it's natural, but it's also quite unnatural to have quite a large weight protruding and making everything unbalanced and, and not and how you were uh, uh, mechanically designed to be. So you need to be mindful of that and how they might be feeling and if it, if you ever were to treat a pregnant woman, you always interact with them and ask how they feel. I mean, you would do it anyway with clients. How does that feel? You're feeling okay. If they start feeling unpleasant, then of course you would stop. Um, in the first trimester, no massage should be done on the back or the abdomen. So it's contraindicative in that first phase. Um, in the second and third trimester, I think it's more okay and actually beneficial um, but obviously, as we said, use pillows, bolsters to make sure they're comfortable. So light stretching and mobility of joints, you have to be cautious. I think that their joints become hypermobile. So um, with all the hormones that are going on, preparing to give birth. So again, you have to be aware of that. But it can help with any swelling. So you can help remove the tissue fluid. You can help relieve stressed and strained muscles from carrying a baby on the, in their tummies the whole time. Um, I, I believe backs get really tight and sore. So massage can be beneficial, but it is a specialist, um, a speciality for a practitioner. You have to do additional qualifications. So you would never treat a pregnant woman unless you've done that training. 
So the final category of contraindications is these red flag ones, people who you really should not treat absolutely. Um, these are definite no-nos. Um, so anybody with temperature, flu, fever, pneumonia, nausea, diarrhea, severe pain, you know, very soon post-surgery epilepsy, deep vein thrombosis, um, severe varicose veins. I mean, I know we had that as a relative one. You would work around that, but you'd never treat the vein itself. Um, bleeding disorders like hemophilia, cancer, uh, severe infections, or any un undiagnosed lumps and bumps. You should seek medical approval. So this is when you would refer clients, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, so this is, these are the sorts of things when you should refer. So if somebody presents, you need medical guidance on if or how or what you can do to help these people. Um, and you might not be able to treat them, but there might be some guidance on how you can and what to do and what to avoid. So temperatures, massage increases circulation. That's part of, one, you know, that's one of the responses of the CV system to massage. You promote blood flow, um, but obviously if somebody has a temperature and an infection, then basically you're helping circulate that infection and toxins, which isn't ideal. And of course, you want to be knowing that it's not COVID so that that doesn't spread and you don't get it and you don't pass it on to other clients. Um, skin conditions where you really shouldn't treat the person, uh, cellulitis, which is a real swelling of limbs, um, chicken pox, shingles, really painful uh, shingles in adults, uh, dermatitis, which is um, inflammation of your skin, might, you know, frostbite, obviously. So there are things there. I guess in terms of your assessment, you just need to show that there are some reasons why you wouldn't treat these people at all if they've got these, if they've got these things. These are absolute local um, contraindications. The last one I just wanted to show was DVT. Now, I know Fee has um, treated somebody where she suspected they had a DVT. There's a, clearly a, um, a lump and an inflamed... Uh, I think probably quite solid part of their vein, varicose veins, you know, a lot of people have varicose veins, but um, when she was doing her treatment, she felt a lump and referred them to seek medical guidance and they did have a DVT. And this is basically a clot. So if you disturb, you massage and treat that clot, you can send it through the CV system all over the body. Now, if that clot blocks an artery in the lungs, the brain, we're in all sorts of trouble um, and this can be you know, very serious and life-threatening. So if you suspect ever there's a clot, um, then you refer for urgent medical attention. So you may know from other coursework units that um, it's pretty common when you're working with athletes or with clients, before you do anything with them, before you train them, before you treat them in this case, you should do a medical screening questionnaire. Um, this is to see if they've got any current or previous medical conditions um, so that you can be informed. And again, these might be red flags. Um, the, this is the easiest way of, at the start, when you first meet them in the consultation, figuring out if it needs to go any further or before you even go any further that you need to refer them. So it can be as easy, as simple as a yes, no. And in your consultation document, you'll need to add this sort of section to gather that information and to gather and to see if they're having any uh, treatment or any medication um, before you go anywhere near treating them and massaging them. When you are having the conversations with your clients, it's not all going to be, here, tick this box. It's going to be conversational. So part of the skill of you as a consultant in this case is having conversation, make them conversations rather than a list of questions and you interrogate them. Um, but what you need to make sure you do is ask information about the condition that they're presenting you with. So things like, what and where is the problem? How did it happen? Do you think? They might not know. They might think it's this and it's something else. How long have you had it? What, when did it happen? Is there any situation? Has it worsened? Is it improving? Is it just stayed the same? What sort of symptoms do you experience? Is it sharp pain, dull pain, comes and goes intermittently? 
severe, you know, how severe is the symptoms, you can give them a scale, one to ten, how would you say the pain is, at its worst, at its best, you know, you're being detective, remember. Um, is there anything that aggravates it or eases it? Do Does it keep you awake? Do you have it at night? Is it just when you do certain things? Um, I think this, I, I've clearly missed that question there. Is this recreational or more serious commitment? As in the activities you do, is it something you do occasionally or is it you're, you're an elite performer um, and it's competitive? How often do you exercise train? I've mentioned that already. But you're just trying to get a larger picture of putting the pieces together to see what might be astray and what might be causing it, what might be influencing it um, before you make decisions on what to do. So the last bit of information I want to share with you is how to refer a client to a medical practitioner. So legally, you cannot treat anybody beyond your limitations of your practice. You are trained, you did a qualification, it enables you to do X, Y, and Z. So you should not be giving medical advice, you should never be doing anything beyond the skill set that you were trained to deliver as a sports massage practitioner or therapist. Um, always the client's safety is of priority and you need to present that in your justifications and you need to present that in your um, consultation and in your treatment. So when you're figuring out if you should go ahead and it's okay for you to go ahead, obviously you're looking for those red flags and the questioning that you're doing will lead to that. The medical screening questionnaire complete will lead to that. And you put all of this information together and decide whether you should or shouldn't go ahead or whether you should refer. So some clients might be referred to a specialist, not you, a chiropractor, a sports therapist, a sir, you know, obviously these are extreme medical professionals. If there's anything you that's way beyond your capacity, you refer them. You never, never, never take the risk of causing harm or treating beyond the limitations of your professional practice. That is expected of you. And the way you refer them is you'd write a letter, you'd have their, the doctor's um, contact details from your client, and you would write and you would give basically a concise explanation of why you're referring them, the background information you've gathered, what the assessments in your consultation presented, um, if you've already been treating them, what you've done, you may not have treated them before, that's okay, and you share this. You have to have your client's consent to do this though, data protection. You can't just share details about them with anybody. And you keep obviously this communication professional and formal. Your clients actually have legal access to it, so they could ask to see any information about them at any time. So this is a sort of a, a simple way of referring and you need to justify that you would do this if you needed to in your justification content. So just to finish this video, um, we've just looked through subjective assessment, gathering information from the athlete's perspective, from your client's perspective, how they feel, what they expect, what's the background, what might be the issues, what do you think, what information can you gather to determine the cause. The next video will look at objective assessments.